What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is DJ Pochidi, and welcome back to the next episode of Ken Follows Pillars of the Earth, where we are looking for the priest that stole our money, and we need to ask the stable boy, but I don't want to go talk to the knights first. So let's go this way. We'll go talk to the stable boy. Some more knights over well, there. That's what you get when you work with halfwits. How am I supposed to move this barrel if it's twice as heavy as me? Let me help. Very impressive. Thank you for that. I'm always telling them, if you want me to restock your kitchen, don't let them cram the barrels to the brim. So, what was it you wanted to know? Um, do you know a monk who frequents the boar a lot? The boar? I used to work there. The boar, the lazy mare, and two private kitchens. <laughs> You're talking about Father Ralph. Thought the women had sucked him dry, but he always comes back with more money. Wow. But he only spends it on beer and ladies. Never has a tip for me. The asshole. Oh, where can we find him? He's a priest at St. Michael. One of them churches round here. Which one is it? It's close to the East Gate. But don't look for him inside. He likes to light around in his back alley. Oh, thank you. You've been very helpful. Near the East Gate. Pleasure. Okay. See you around. Okay. So there's the church. Let's go take a look at the church. Are you look Father Ralph? Look at what we found here. What if I am? Does that mean yes? I guess so. He's the only monk around. What do you want? Well, I am the son of Bartholomew, the Earl of Shiring. So? Our father gave you money for safekeeping. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? I mean... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> now piss off. What a priest. You're about to commit a great sin. If we don't get that money, we'll starve. Start begging for arms, then. You may not know it, but a lot of people live that way. So you're saying there's no money? Right. But my father said... Your father lied, then. <laughs> We should talk to the sheriff. <laughs> It'll be my word against the word of a jailed traitor. And now give me some peace. I'm hungry. He's right, isn't he? We need proof that he's lying. We need proof that he's lying. Like what? Maybe something he recently purchased that a monk couldn't normally afford. <laughs> That's smart, Ali. And then? I don't know. At least we'll be sure that he's lying, right? Uh, maybe we can expose him. Maybe if we expose him, he'll give in. Are you sure? No, but you can see the guilt eating at him already. Keep an eye on him. I'll have a look around. Okay, I think we need to go talk to the lady with the dress. Or... Let's see, what's in here? It's too heavy. Richard, go lift that barrel for me. There's something underneath there. It's too heavy. Must have cost a fortune. Okay. Anything in the fire? Ah. <sighs> 
I've been freezing all day. Hmm. Hey, chicken. Now we can go there. Let's use a dagger on the barrel, see if that works. Hey! Oh, is this yours? Oh, I didn't think a poor monk could afford something like this. <laughs> Ooh. Richard, I found it. Oh, no. He took all the money. Oh, no, that asshole. What now? Let's go talk to him again. Don't pretend you didn't see, Monk. I found this under your barrel. You are a thief. That strap proves nothing. You seem very certain of this. Sheriff! Hush, you stupid brats. <laughs> the sheriff is a bastard. He'll take everything for himself. But first, he'll take your hands. Sheriff or no sheriff, you won't get your money. Ali, this isn't going anywhere. Well, at least we know now that he won't call for help. <laughs> Give us the money. It belonged to a traitor to the crown. By giving it to me, he paid his debt to God. Yeah, he We did. will make you pay, uh -huh. you monster. You wouldn't hurt a man of the church. You're no longer a man of the church, you asshole. I warn you, I have friends nearby. <laughs> if you scream, I will show them your beer-soaked belt and tell them what a thieving liar you are. You wouldn't harm me. Oh, no? Richard, you go over there. What? Why? Make sure no one's watching. <laughs> he? What? You're a devil. I'm going to cut out your eyes one by one. First, the left eye. No! Oh, oh please don't! Where's the money? Here, here, I got it on me. And where's the rest? Where's the rest? Gone. Gone where? I spent it. Let's take what we've got and go. Uh, all right. I may come back one day, and then I'll collect what you owe us. <laughs> Oh, boo hoo. Sobby little priest. You were wonderful, Ali. You scared him after death. Yes, well, now, come on. Father wants us to find Aunt Edith. Where do we want to go? Want to go there? Okay, then we'll go there. On the road to Gloucester, my feet started to bleed. Oh, wow. I remembered a cobbler who lived nearby in the town of Haystead who could sell us some boots. But taking the detour would cost us both money and time. Well, you have to protect your feet. But if you don't have the your feet, then you can't walk anymore. The cobbler was a quiet man with little love for children. 
When I asked for a pair of his cheapest boots, he stared at me, trying to measure my query's worth. Then he lifted his finger and pointed at a pair that would cost us more than half of what we had. Decline or leave? I noticed Richard staring at me as I curled my lip and politely turned down the ugly offer. Then, with my feet still bleeding, I returned to the road, aiming for a shortcut through the forest to make up for wasted... In the afternoon, the sky darkened and the temperature dropped drastically. We considered setting up camp to allow us an opportunity to warm our worn-down feet. However, we were already running low on food and would soon need to reach our destination. I was hoping he would ask us back when we threatened to leave and offer us a cheaper pair, but yeah, I missed out on that one. Let's uh, set up camp. Richard had been silent for a while when I offered him our last piece of bread. Uncle Simon will make you a knight, I said, but wouldn't I have to fight for King Stephen then? He answered, taking a bite out of the dry crust. I watched him for a while, then turned away, wondering how difficult our lives had become and how infinitely more complicated. Very complicated. In the hills, there are a lot of poor small holdings. We asked a shepherd for directions to Huntley. It's just down the road, he answered. I thanked him and gave Richard a hopeful push. Hopeful. Very hopeful. Abandoned house. Oh my. That doesn't look good. I don't think our auntie lives here anymore. He does have some sheep. Okay, nothing there. It's all burned and rotting. Auntie and Uncle must have left some time ago. Anything else we can do? Maybe they built their new home nearby. A proper one made of stone. Yeah, I don't They think always so. had coin enough for a stone house anyway. Maybe this isn't even the right house. It is. How would you know? It, it's been a long time since we came here with Father. These houses all look alike. Shut up, Hallie. Please. They're gone. Probably killed. Whatever happened to them? We will never find out. It's over. It's not over. There's no place for us to go. Find hope. Okay, where's hope? Can we go outside? What's in this table? Why did you go in there? Go back inside. 
tells Richard about the stable, and then we'll stay there for tonight. Don't give up. Mm. We will get through this. Come on, pull yourself together. Leave me alone, Ali. Why don't you go for a walk or something? We'll keep it. Okay, let's go back outside. Go for a walk. Let's uh, ask the shepherd. Oh, good day again. Good day. Huntley is just down that road. You can't miss it. I know. We just found out that the people we've been looking for aren't there anymore. Oh, that's a shame. What are you doing? What are you doing? Getting all the work done. My wife is ill, so I have to do it alone. Needs to be done by nightfall, otherwise I won't get them to Winchester tomorrow. Why are you asking? We were supposed to live here with our uncle and aunt, but since they're gone, we need to find another way to get by. Do you know what happened to the owners of that burned down house down the road? It's not Simon you're looking for, is it? Yep, it Why, is. Yes. A while ago, some knights came to his house, nasty bunch. Burned it down, said he was part of some scheme against the king, like his brother, the Earl. What happened to Simon and his wife? To know, haven't seen any of them since. Oh. I understand. Thank you. We could help shear your sheep. We could help you shear your sheep. Nah, never let a stranger handle your flock. Besides, I have nothing to pay you with. We're penniless. We could take the wool to Winchester for you. You could stay at home and look after your wife while we sell your stock. Well, that would be kind of you. But I couldn't trust you to negotiate the right price and bring the money back safely. Well, then just buy it. What if I bought the wool from you? You'd get the money right now and wouldn't have to go to market anymore. And whatever more we can negotiate will be the pay for our travels. Well, that's an interesting thought. But for that to work, you would need to buy my entire stock, and I doubt you have coin for that. Now, let me get back to work. The sun will set soon. How much for one sack? Just name your price. One and a half pounds. Offer one pound and a quarter. Check the quality first. I want to see the wool first. All right, have a look. Let's see. Huh. These fleeces are quite thin. I put the cheap ones on top, in case of rain. Mm, the ones deeper down don't look that much better. Well, I couldn't wait for the wool to grow any thicker. My family is hungry and weak. I had to shear my sheep early this year. All right. Let's see. I can give you one pound and sixty pence. Nah. Well, all right. Throw me the coin. I'll finish shearing old Mabel here, then bring out the rest I've got. Maybe you also want to talk to the other shepherds around here. They might want to sell too. <laughs> ah, all right. Thank you. By the way, there is a man looking for you. He came by just shortly after you. I told him you went to Huntley. What man? Dunno. Brown scruffy hair, beard, black horse. Could be he rode right past you. That old hut is not easy to find. Shall I give him a message if he turns up again? Tell him we left Huntley for good. I will. 
Now let me get those sacks for you. <laughs> I wonder who that would be. I wonder what Richard will think of this. If Richard's still there. He is. What did we do wrong, Ali? Why is God punishing us? We did nothing wrong, little brother. It's just the first time we're facing difficulties that other people go through their entire lives. But there is nowhere for us to go. We're commoners now. Commoners who never learn to do common work and... We both swore an oath to Father. If we don't get the Elden back, we will go to hell. We could become wool merchants. We could become wool merchants. What do we know about wool? We know from Meg that a lot of shepherds complain about their walk to Winchester. What if we did that for them? And what about me becoming a knight? Uncle Simon's not the only one who'd take you as a squire. If we collected enough money, we could pay another knight to teach you. It might work. Yeah, it will work, kid. Right? We've had some bad luck till now, but surely not everyone is a fiend. It'll take some time, but we should be able to gradually increase our income. All we need to do is have a lot of patience and pray to God. Ah! Oh, there he is. Richard! Lord Amley caught me riding the horse you stole from him. Uh! He told me before I take you back, I can have some fun with you. Uh! Ah! Get away from him! Oh, we killed him. Richard! Richard, are you all right? What happened? <laughs> oh, you're alive! <laughs> you're alive! Why are you crying? I just killed a man. Because we are both alive. And he's not. Achievement Looking gap. Looking back, two we've been us. lucky that his bones hadn't been broken. And that his ear had healed so quickly after we had burned out the wound. Otherwise, I'm not certain my brother would have survived the attack in Huntley. Once he could walk again, we gathered the few things we had and headed out. Counting our blessings and preparing to build ourselves a new life. A few weeks later. That's a lot of wool you got there, Missy. How's your wound doing? Don't worry, I'm fine. May I ask what you're planning to do with all that wool? I just note on trading inspect. I negotiate a good price to make profit, find stress, quality of the goods. First stress the quality of the goods, whatever you can think of. Know your goods and then once the partner is willing to negotiate, do not ask for too much, asking twice the amount of the initial offer. Initial offer will likely result in a bad deal. Being too humble on the deal, on the other hand, will make your goods seem cheap and your offer uninteresting. Grumpy man and a monk. Mind showing me a piece of your stock? I'd like to establish the quality before I make any promises. Yeah, sure. Let's give him the wool sample. Hmm, not bad. That's quite some wool you brought along. 
I hope you're not planning to set up shop here too. Meg would kill me if I let you. <laughs> We came to sell this wool to you, not to compete with you. It comes from the shepherds near Huntley. They gave it to me so they wouldn't have to come here themselves. I see. All right, I'll give you a pound per sack for this. What? Uh, only a pound? Ah, that's a fair price. No, it's not. But I paid more for this. I'd sell at a loss. Hmm. How much did you pay? One and a quarter pounds per sack. It was almost all I had. The rest I had to spend on the cart and the toll at the gate. <sighs> then you let yourself be overcharged. What? I can't pay for your mistakes, can I? You have to handle that yourself. Ali, let me handle this. Glad Richard talked. Let's give him a try. Your money would not only pay for the wool, but also fund our fight to reclaim our earldom. If you pay us more, I shall never forget that courtesy. And will greatly repay you once I'm back in charge of Shiring. I may even allow you sole access to our own wool production. That's a lofty promise. And it would hardly cost you. So, you two are the son and daughter of the Earl of Shiring? We are. But you're just children. Uh-oh. We will make coin, and I will become a knight fighting for glory and honor until the king grants us back our noble inheritance. <sighs> that may all be very well, but I can't pay you more than what I already offered. Why not? Then I'll prove that the wool's quality is worth the price. Just let me look at it once more. <sighs> We've got to work out what signifies high quality. Maybe if we remember what the shepherds said. It's from a good breed of sheep, they said. What else? Um... What else did they say? We know who that is. Have you thought it over? Praise the wall. Give me another minute to okay. think. Okay, let's uh, examine it again. And other wool looks greasy. No. It's dry, light, and soft. That too. The wool is pretty strong too. It holds together well. That yeah, me too. Hmm. Okay. Now, what's our seal speech? So. Strong. Some sheep produce brittle fiber, but this wool is strong. Its sheep had good, healthy lives. Hmm, hmm. That's suitable for finer and durable fabrics. It's dry. In this weather, some cartloads of wool would arrive damp. I made sure that this is dry and undamaged. It's light and easy to transport. Hmm, and customers are hesitant to buy wet wool. And it's clean. Wool is often full of grease and dirt. But this batch was scoured very thoroughly. It's very clean and soft. Hmm, even picky customers would be delighted. That is true. All right. What pricing did you have in mind? Reasonable. One pound and ten shilling per sack, then. <sighs> well, tell you what. I'll give you one and a quarter pounds for every sack. 
You've brought up some good arguments. Your wool is exquisite. Of course it is. Ah, but not a penny more. All right? No, we can do that. <laughs> That's not enough. I want one and a half pounds. Well, you're not getting that. Or would you prefer to get one pound after all? All right. I accept your offer. Ah, dang it. Thank you for your business. We've done it, Ali. Well, we've received as much as we paid. But at least I negotiated a better price. I know why Meg likes you, Aliena. You're just as ruthless as her. Don't be so hard on yourself. My friend, Milius, says that a good bargain needs a lot of foresight and experience. Can I help you? Forgive me, I didn't mean to barge in, but... You are the Lady Aliena of Shiring, are you not? Yes, I am. And I'm Lord Richard, our Bartholomew's son. My name is Philip of Gwyneth. I am the Prior of Kingsbridge. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. You helped a lot of people after the Hamleys attacked my father's castle. It we did. only did what was right. I met your father. My father knew many people. Not all of them were his allies. I know. I'd like to invite you to come to Kingsbridge. Our own wool trade has fallen somewhat into neglect, God forgive, but we have plenty of sheep. I am sure we could come to an agreement. You want us to be merchants? Nice. <laughs> But I sold at a loss. You wouldn't work for me. You would work with me. I can see that you are not afraid of hard work. Nope, nope, we're not. I don't know a single novice who would have been willing to pull a cart like that on his own. You may have made losses, but that only means there is more to learn for you. My friend, Brother Milius, would be delighted to speak with you. He always goes to markets for our priory. What do you say? I'll consider it. Please, do consider my offer. You will be most welcome in Kingsbridge. It is the least I can do. Thank you, Father. So all the stories come together. Not much later, I found a home in Kingsbridge. Nice. I remember when I got there, there was Jack. <laughs> you! I remember you. You're the boy with no father. Actually, I have two fathers now. Uh-oh, that sounds wrong. Is that so? Yes. Tom Builder and Jack Sherberg. And then the days just went by. Little did I know that the best and the worst was yet to come. Uh-oh. You did not knock at your old townhouse. You found a place to sleep for the night. Your feet ache from the journey. You can finally swore to the oath. You saw your father one last time. You saved Richard's life, but you're still in but you're both still in shock. You paid the shepherd one and a quarter pounds for each sack of wool. You negotiated a better price for the wool, but still sold at a loss. Philip has invited you to come to Kingsbridge. Nice! So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. I had a blast. If you did, please leave a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more Pillars of the Earth. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.